introduce the final speaker, Mark Fox, who's the Director of External Affairs for the Nature Conservancy of Hawaii. Originally from the Big Island, uh, Mark got his undergrad and law degree from Santa Clara University in California. And after practicing law in Honolulu, he joined the Washington staff of Senator Inouye, handling issues related to the environment and to agriculture. In 2000, Mark returned to Hawaii and joined the Nature Conservancy to work on environmental policy and government relations. Mark's going to speak with us today uh, on the role of policy in implementing ecosystem service approach to conservation and our economy here in Hawaii. Thank you, Mark. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's good to be the, the cleanup batter, and I'll try to be brief and leave a, a good amount of time for some discussion and questions. Um, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about some of the ideas that have been discussed um, going forward and, and what that would mean if we wanted to take those forward into the policy arena. Um, uh, we've heard about things like um, cap and trade approaches to emission reductions and creating carbon markets. We've heard about things like conservation funds. We've heard about uh, conservation easements and on the federal level you can get a tax credit as a, as a landowner if you donate a conservation easement and give up some of your bundle of, of rights to your property. Similarly, other states and even the Congress is also considering now um, tax credits, income tax credits for things like direct cash investment in the conservation management of, of private lands. Um, this House Concurrent Resolution 200 that we heard about, uh, thanks to House Speaker Say in, in the 2006 legislature, asked the Department of Land and Natural Resources to work with uh, private landowners in Hawaii and work with um, the science community, including some of the speakers that you heard beforehand, and work with the private sector, folks like David Brand, to identify what incentive um, opportunities are out there to private landowners to make uh, conservation management of their lands um, economically viable and, pro and indeed profitable for them. And one of the requirements of that resolution um, now 18 months or so later is that we provide a report back to the legislature in its 2008 session, which is coming right up. Uh, it goes by very quickly and we'll be, we'll be right back there in January before we know it. But we're going to report back to the legislature with a lot of help from the folks that spoke to you today about you know, what we've discovered and, and what recommendations we might have um, uh, to try to incentivize landowners or, or kind of spur some of these market opportunities along um, to promote conservation, um, particularly of Malka lands in Hawaii, like we've been talking about. And so what I wanted to do was, um, uh, uh, with deference to the speaker who's here and who's an expert on this stuff, uh, give you a, a, a little bit of a uh, sort of a dis demystifying talk about, about, say, our state legislature and as, as an example of a, of a legislative body and, and how you might go forward or we might go forward together to make some proposals to, to a legislative body to, to ask for help. Um, and, and it really isn't um, that frightening. We all read about you know, the legislature in the newspaper and, and kind of you know, wonder how you know, stuff goes into that building uh, behind those words and don't really understand how, what happens up there and, and what comes out. It's actually not that mystical a process um, and it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, it does take a lot of time and a lot of energy, but, but it, it's, um, it, it's also very entertaining <laughs> to participate in, at least I think it is. Um, so what I'd like to chat about is, you know, considering we go forward with a report on House Concurrent Resolution 200 with some of the things we may have heard about today, what do we need to do to present those things to the legislature? Well, first of all, um, some very simple things. You'd, you'd want to build a coalition of supporters. 
um, the kinds of people that are going to benefit or have an interest in seeing the success of a piece of legislation or a change in policy that might contribute to conservation management. Again, it's not rocket science. Um, landowners, nonprofits with an interest in, in conservation, uh, trade organizations like um, the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council or the uh, Farm Bureau Federation, for example, community organizations that are concerned about their water supply and concerned about um, having resources for their children that are like the resources that they grew up with. And what I found to be one of the very most powerful things that the legislature is when regular people uh, come to the legislature and say, hey, this is important to me. I, I'm your constituent, um, and, and it's important to, to me and to my family and to my children and to the lifestyle um, that, that I want to have um, living in our state. Um, getting into the nuts and bolts about it, it's really important beforehand to develop good, solid, clear materials um, that you're going to present to the legislature that, that are very short, very clear, and explain what you're asking for. Um, it's, again, not rocket science, but, but really spend some, we need to spend some time to distill it down so it's clear and understandable. Uh, very important in this instance, particularly where we're going to be seeking, um, you know, whether you're seeking some funding or a tax credit or some kind of economic motivation, you've got to do some analysis or we've got to do some analysis on the, on the economic impact. Um, the legislature is uh, very likely looking at, just like we all are, in sort of a plateauing of our economy or maybe a dipping down. Um, in the media, in the last two weeks, we heard that um, the State Council of Revenues recently revised its um, growth projections for our state economy from, I think it was around 6% uh, last quarter, and they've revised it down to, I think, about 3.5%. Well, the legislature really has to focus in on that and think about the resources available to it to do all the things that it needs to do in terms of paying for schools, paying for roads, paying for other kinds of capital improvements. <coughs> Excuse me. And so it's really important that if, if a, a coalition of folks is going forward to the legislature with a proposal that has some sort of impact on revenue streams in Hawaii, that, that an economic analysis is completed to, to, to give the legislature an idea of you know, what the economic effect on, on uh, tax revenue is going to be um, if, it's, if it's asking for direct uh, payments or what the economic impact might be if it's asking for um, for a thing like a tax credit. Um, next steps, getting into some of the, the, um, the more relationship building. This is a key part of working with the legislature. And that is um, just, frankly, getting to know your legislators. In this case, um, the kinds of legislation we might be talking about are probably going to end up in front of um, two or three particular committees within the House of Representatives and, and their counterpart committees in, in the State Senate, for example. And that's going to be um, the Water Land Committees, oftentimes, um, uh, at least in the Senate, the Water Land Committee has been combined and it's been actually the Water Land Agriculture and Hawaiian Affairs Committee. That's getting broken apart a little bit next legislative session. Uh, the House has a separate Agriculture Committee, so there's a very strong likelihood that a potential piece of legislation, like a, a piece of legislation where you'd ask for a tax credit for donation of conservation easement, and if that law mirrors the current federal law for a federal tax credit for such a donation, where you can get that, that tax credit for donation of a conser piece of co uh, easement over a piece of conservation land, uh, an easement over a piece of land that's going to be protected in agriculture, an easement over a piece of land that's going to be protected for its cultural and historic values, um, if our law proposes to mirror that law, um, you're going to take a trip through a couple of different committees, including water land, including agriculture. Um, and including a potentially a separate environment and energy committee um, as well. And then finally, where you uh, land up is because there's an economic aspect or a financial aspect to that legislation, you end up in what you generally call the money committees in the legislature. In the House of Representatives, it's the Finance Committee. And in the Senate, it's the Ways and Means Committee. Um, and generally, what you'd like to do is, is um, and the, the, these folks are actually very approachable. You may not think they are, uh, or you may have the impression. What you end up doing is, uh, when they're out of session, times like now, and, and this year is a particularly good year because it's not an election year, to, to although they're busy, contact their offices, find out what their schedules are, uh, seek some meetings. Um, better yet, um, the next opportunity, take them on a field trip. 
Um, again, their, their schedules are very busy, but if you plan in advance, there are great opportunities to get legislators out on a field trip, show them uh, uh, your land if, if you are a landowner or a land manager, explain to them the challenges you're working with and, and give them you know, an opportunity to get wet and get dirty and, and, and get a sense of, of what the, those issues are. Um, through that process of getting to know legislators and taking them out on a field trip, you'll get a sense of you know, which ones find a particular interest um, in these issues and, and ask them if they would consider um, you know, uh, being a champion uh, for a piece of legislation and, and sponsoring it and, and looking to recruit their colleagues to support it as well. Um, similarly, and these are sort of parallel paths, a uh, very important thing for a, a coalition that's getting behind a piece of legislation is to um, uh, uh, collaborate with and advise key state agency staff. Um, so again, in this case, you, you know, would want to let the governor's office know what we're up to. Um, ideally, you'd love to have the agencies that are going to be involved in, in um, certifying that, uh, you know, a conservation easement or a, or a um, conservation management plan associated with a conservation easement is a, is a good, valid uh, conservation management plan. So very likely the DLNR would be a, a government agency that might be placed in that role. And so you'd want to be able to have the head of the DLNR coming up to the legislature at the time this piece of legislation has been being heard and saying, we support this bill, rather than um, we don't have any comment or worse yet, we oppose it. Um, uh, tax department is also a challenging one. If you're asking for a tax credit or, or some effect on, on revenue of the state, um, as you can imagine, it would be ideal to have the tax department saying, you know, this is, this is not a horrendous burden on the state um, versus coming up and just flat out opposing. Um, that's going to be a tricky one. It's a lot easier probably to get the DLNR to come out and, and support a piece of legislation uh, of this nature than it is to get Kurt Kawafuchi from the tax department. But uh, it's still worth letting him know what you're up to. Um, <coughs> Also important, if the legislation gets introduced, you find some legislators that are interested, uh, willing to work with you to help move this piece of legislation through the process, very important uh, to um, find some time to, to come to the legislature and testify. And, that, and that, the legislators understand that that is a horrific burden um, because the legislature primarily operates during the work week when, when most people need to be out attending to, to their businesses. And so uh, also for that reason, though, it has a, a very uh, a strong impact on legislators when, it, when folks, real folks, will come out and say, hey, this is important. You know, this is important to my business. This is important to my family. This is important to the lifestyle that I want to see my family and my community have in Hawaii. And that's why I was willing to come here, um, you know, on a Tuesday at 1.30 in the afternoon to, to uh, provide some testimony to the legislature. Um, so uh, working. Um, looking through the process and finding that opportunity to come and testify I think is very, very important. The last thing I'll comment on is um, the legislature is, is uh, um, on the one hand a very fast-paced process during the time that it's in session, but it, it's also a very laborious process and oftentimes a piece of legislation needs to gain momentum over more than just one legislative session and I've seen many folks, I mean, I, I, it's my job to, to be up at the legislature and monitor bills and testify and, and so I'm, you know, I get, I get paid to be there um, and, and I enjoy being there. For a lot of people, it's very discouraging when they, they experience the emotional ups and downs of, of what's happening during the session and, and, and the bill getting killed off in one committee and then trying to refocus on the other body and see if you can keep it alive. Um, going in, I think it's very important to understand that you know, not to give up, stick with, you know, stick with, uh, you know, your, your, uh, your legislation, work with your legislators, and understand going in that, that uh, you may uh, hit a, a good year and like the, the bill to uh, reduce emissions in Hawaii to 1990 levels. That went through with great leadership from folks like Speaker Say and the leaders in the legislature in one session. Um, that's not necessarily typical. And, and so understanding that going in and being persistent and not giving up is, is a, uh, an, imp an important consideration. Um, so with that um, and those offerings of, of some suggestions about how you'd go about pursuing a piece of legislation that might come forward out of some of these discussions that we had, I'll um, stop and if there's time, take a couple of questions.
Okay. Apana na to ohu e ho ohu i te ala ohi a ohu kani ohi a we i wa no hodu a i ohu ohu mu mu i kawa i le no homa na ohu pahi o i kawa paliku kawa hawa paliku i kawa pa ma kani ku ma ku a hakali ta ohu le wa i e kalawa e haka ano ole ke i a ohu no ke no ke. Hakala la ke ki a manu i ka ohu i ka ohi a hamau me ho o hamau i tale o kale hua pane a pane mai pahai ke i a mamu e.